David Edward and Den Henk discuss Dan's book, End of the World. Dan, how are you? I'm good. Thanks oh. for having me. <laughs> That's great that you're good. Um, hey, look, it's great talking to you. Um, you know, I noticed a number of your books, and, and I know we were just talking, and I, I believe the first uh, set of books you wrote was a bunch of short stories called Christmas is Cancelled, which I think is hilarious. But we're here to talk about <laughs> the, the end of the world, right, which is your latest book. And I think right. you've got five or six books between that. So um, I can't wait to, to talk to you about your writing style and stuff. But so, so what kind of books do you write? There, I wouldn't say that they're straight up, you know, horror or sci-fi or anything. I say they're more like they've been described to me as speculative fiction. I'm like, what is that? And they say, <laughs> well, it's just, it's kind of like a a genre for like where you like a catch-all where you throw everything in there. But I'm they definitely have a dark tone. I I try not to go like with a horrific slasher, super gory everything because I, I think that's just boring. Yeah. You know? yeah. I, I like a good story. So, you know, like, like even like I like uh, horror movies a lot, but I like the horror movies that have like a creature in it or some weird element or sci fi in it. So that's what I try and do with my stories. I try and always have some weird element. And usually they lean towards the dark side. Yeah. I, I tried to guess. I, I, I went through your book and I was trying to guess the genre. And what I wrote down was epic sci fi horror, end of the world thriller. <laughs> <laughs> Which, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, so let, let's talk about that. So you started off writing short stories. Well, you didn't start. You're, you're a very talented um, author. No, oh, thank you. Well, not just author, but artist, right? Because, I mean, you you do paintings, you do uh, tattoos, which takes a lot of artistry. Um, you do drawings and illustrations for your books. Um, okay. for, and you've gone after the comic book industry and stuff we were, we were just talking about. Um, so what do you consider yourself, you know, what are you for? Are you an author first or what are you first? Well, I debated that a lot in, in uh, coming up in high school and grade school. And, you know, I was like, what do I really want to do? Because I really enjoy doing art and I really enjoy writing. And like I, I took like, you know, creative writing classes and art design classes. And I, I took I remember when I was in third grade, my parents sent me to oil painting classes. You know, I wrote my first book in fifth grade. So, but it was always a big debate. And then I remember I read Watchmen, which was by far the most, you know, fully fleshed out comic book I'd ever read because until then, you know, they're like little short stories, like even if they were well told. But Alan Moore, the guy who wrote Watchmen, he really planned it out. He'd draw little sketches, he'd give to the artist, he built a whole map like a little model of Manhattan so he could like position where the characters were. So he did his research. He dove into it hard. And I said, that's what I want to do. And this is the ultimate. I can write and I can draw. Nice. And, and you do ta and you own a tattoo shop, right? I own a tattoo shop that, in New York. Yeah. That, that's like the most literal way for an artist to get paid that I can think of. You know, I mean, it's, it's just right it, there. No, it really is. Yeah. I, I moved to yeah. New York to make it as an artist and writer. And it, it's really, Here's the weird thing. It's really hard to make money off that. Like I did band covers for um, for rock bands and metalcore bands. And a lot of those bands, they don't pay you or the label doesn't pay. They play all sorts of games. And I, I did stuff for like, you know, clubs and flyers, all sorts of stuff, and apparel companies. And uh, I remember the first time I made solid money is when I started tattooing. And when I started tattooing, I was like able to use my art skills to actually pay my rent. And I was like, but, you know, I'm just going to do this until I get a, quote, real job. But then I liked it so much, like, now I won't quit. I probably narrowed down to only work on the projects I really like, but I wouldn't quit. But, and, and where it just where in New York is, just so people know, where, where is your, your studio? Or your, it's, uh, your Long Beach, New York. So it's about 35 minutes out of Manhattan. Okay, good, good. Basically, so it's where everyone goes to go to the beach on vacation when the weather's nice. nice. So it's like right now, I can't find parking. <laughs> oh, you really don't? You don't get a couple parking spots with your own place? That's no, no. Yeah, New York is crazy expensive. Yeah, no. I so know. I, I, I have a, a studio apartment. You know, I, I live in Ocala, Florida. I used to live um in New Jersey on uh, the the Jersey side up there, and I, I my money goes about twice as far, maybe three times as far down here. It's just insane. You know, a dollar is just different down here. But let's not reminisce. Let's get to your book. So <laughs> you, you started off writing short stories and and the and your newest book. Is, is this your newest book, The End of the World? The, the well, actually, slight correction. Um, I started off. So when, when going all the way back to like when I was in ninth grade, I had a story I wanted to tell. And at first I was convinced it was going to be a comic story. And 
I remember I read Watchmen, so I was like, this is what I got to do. And I was living in Florida. My dad's army, so we moved all around. So we were living in northern Florida. And in northern Florida, there were a lot of, like, independent, you know, bookstores and comic, you know, comic shops and so on. A lot of, like, indie artists were there. So I get tons of advice from them, and I get to show my stuff and all this. I was like, this is what I'm going to do. And so then when it, then we moved to Fairfax, Virginia, so I kept up with that. And I started sending my stuff out to DC Comics and Image Comics. And uh, actually, Paradox Press picked me up, and then they folded. And uh, okay. yeah, and then there were a couple of people that were like, we like your stuff, and then they folded. Um, Kitchen Sink, you know, they're like, they they were talking about like they were just ready to put it out, and then they folded. Um, <laughs> But and there were a couple other people that like like Caliber Press who put out the Crow and stuff like that, you know. So, but anyways, I was like, you know, then I put myself through art school and I was like, so I'm really going to make a go for this. And I moved to New York City to make a go for it. And I interviewed with DC Comics and that was a, it was a huge letdown. And so that's when I was like, I got to start writing. So that story that I always had, like I kept evolving it and evolving it. I was like, but... I feel like it's a great story, so I want to tell it. So that's my first novel. So it's the Black Seas of Infinity. And when that came out, you know, first I, I wrote it and it took me forever to write because I had brain cancer and then my wife died in a hand to run and there was all this stuff. <laughs> okay. And uh, But I was kind of well known as like the horror tattoo artist. So there was a guy who wrote a, a zombie novel with a tattoo artist in it. So he wanted me to look at his book and like give him a, a take on how he portrayed the tattoo artist and I was like and that really lit a fire in my ass so I was like I got to get this finished and then when my wife died and I hit a run I was like life is short I got to do this right now yeah I think I read that in your bio I'm, I'm sorry man that's tough I know yeah thank you that. yeah um, but then when I got that out you know as like I thought the hard part would be writing it the hard part is getting a publisher yeah so, yeah. While I'm getting it published, I'm dealing with all that. I didn't want to stop writing, so I started writing short stories, and that's my second collection, Down Highways in the Dark. I see. Very interesting. Well, so so let's let's get into it. Um, what does a writing day look like for you when you're when you're when you are in a writing project? How do you do it? You know, do you outline it? Do you do you force yourself to sit through a word count, a time? You know, how do you write? All right, I don't do I don't do word count and I don't do a time. I know some people do and that works for them and it doesn't work for me. <laughs> what I do is I take a lot of notes and I find I get the the best I get the best ideas when I'm doing physical exercise, when I'm like biking or something like that, because all the endorphins are running through your brain and everything. And I'll be like they don't come just out of nowhere, they come when you're like focusing on like, where should I go with this? What should I do with this? You know. But once you start thinking, it like provides further things along the pathway. And then I'll write all those notes down in my phone, you know, in notes on my phone. And then when I sit down to write, I'll read through them. And if they're relevant to the story, I'll use them. If not, I'll, I'll like save them for another story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's interesting. So how long? So let, I mean, so let's let's so uh, the end of the world, it's about 300 pages. So it's a big it's, it's a serious book. But how long did it take you to write that? It took me a little bit longer than it should have <laughs> because I wrote it. It takes me about a year to write a novel because okay. um, I do a lot. You know, I, I do album covers and book covers and all this other stuff. So it's like I, I can't just sit down in a corner and write. Yeah. But it took me. Plus, I do nine full page illustrations like. Uh, yeah. Like this. Yeah. So from my comic book days, I kind of kept that in mind. So and this is the size that they do comics at is 11 by 17. So I do them this size and they're shrunk down for the novel. But it usually takes me about a year to complete that entire process. And then I did End of the World, and I'd use this. Uh, I have a great editor called Carl Monger, and uh, he he edited my book of short stories. He edited my first book. Um, but I was like, you know, he's a little pricey. I, I'm going to try somebody else. So I tried somebody else, and they ruined it. Yeah. And right. so then I had to go through the entire novel and re-edit it myself. So it kind of spoke in the original voice. Then I went to Carl again, and yeah, I yeah. had him edit. So it took a little bit longer than it should have. Yeah, and no, I, I, I found it once you find an editor that works for you. I mean, I'm prices obviously, you know, because they're expensive. But like I've done the same thing. I, I went through like three, and then I found a lady who's like perfect for me, and I use her now. She's done. I've done. I've, I've published like 42 books, and she's done 
41 of them. Uh, no, and, yeah. Yeah, and we know each other, you know, she knows all the stupid mistakes I always make. So she fixes them. And um, so, yeah, so that, that's good. So, so is, is the end of the world, is this your, your most recent book? Yes, definitely. Okay. And it came about two years ago, two, two or three years ago, two years ago. Two and years ago. I, I've written some short stories since then. Um, but yeah, that's my most recent book. And, I, and so the funny thing is like, so when it came out, it was a little bit, it wasn't a slow burn, but it wasn't like, you know, it wasn't Stephen King or anything. Wow. And then, then the lockdowns hit with the, you know, COVID and everything. So all of a sudden she'll shut up because it's called the end of the world. So everybody's like, Oh, it's the end of the world. You know? <laughs> So that was good for me. Yeah. Marketing genius. Hey, your next book, let's, let's call your next book and guy gas prices went down. How about that? <laughs> well, <laughs> my, my next book, like end of the world is kind of a sequel to the black seas of infinity, but the way I describe it is like Mad Max and road warrior. Like you don't have to see Mad Max to see road warrior. Yeah. You yeah. Know? So if you read, if you read the end of the world, it's a full complete story. But if you read the black seas of infinity, you just got a little more background. You know, yeah. so, but the next one I'm thinking is going to be a more or less direct sequel to the end of the world. Okay. Interesting. Are you, are you actually, are you actively working on that now? Yes. Yes. Beautiful. Beautiful. And I do a lot of research and it's like, spoiler alert, but it's like this giant alien invasion and people fighting it off. My dad's military intelligence. So I said, what should I study? So he gave me recommendations for a bunch of books and I have a whole stack of books that I'm reading up on to. I like to do research. If I don't know about it, I, I want to do the research. I don't want to get called out. Yeah, absolutely. Well, in your book, I mean, it's doing pretty good and it's on both Barnes and Noble. And it's, I mean, it's actually selling, you know, a lot of times people put them on Barnes and Noble, but it doesn't, you know, they get all their sales from Amazon, but you're, you're actually selling on a couple of different platforms and you're getting decent, you know, reviews. It looks like, it looks like it's, it looks like you're on your way. It looks like it's going pretty good. I hope so. Yeah. People say that it's gotten the best review or they say it's the best writing that they've seen from me, which I mean, you'd hope that you get better as you go along, you know, but, but people say it's like the, the most smooth and fluent or whatever. So I'm like, that's great feedback, you know? Yeah. And I, I feel like, like on this one, I, I was really trying to get it out and I figured that that's helped too. Yeah. Awesome. Well, so, so what advice might you have? Let, you know, you, you started this, I mean, you were kind of born with it and, and you had to kind of figure out where it fit into your life. Uh, let's say that, you know, many, I think many people ha have, have, have to answer those same questions as they progress. Now, a lot of them just kind of fall into life and they never come back to like pursuing their dreams, you know, if writing is someone's dream, but what, what advice would you have for someone who, you know, just like, you know, they, they thought they wanted to do it, but they haven't done it yet. How do you, how do you go from having your story in your head to starting not to starting the process of writing and then finishing and actually getting the book done because those are two very different things right well there i would say there there's all right there, everyone has a different approach to it um i know stephen king talks about how you have to write a certain amount of words every day i don't follow that approach at all but i feel like if you have a what you think is a really strong idea it really helps if you like kind of work it out in notes first you kind of know where you're going with it you can just have the skeletal concept, you know, and then start committing it to a page. And what I do is I'll have that skeletal concept. I'll write like, you know, a couple pages, then I'll go back and I'll edit those pages. And then, you know, and then I'll keep going through the story and through the story. And sometimes I'll go back and I'll, I'll re-edit to make like stuff early in the story, jive with stuff later on in the story. But I, I figure if you, if you have a concept, put it down and, Often, you know, uh, I'll get a roadblock like, you know, I kind of know how the story should evolve, but what should I do next? So I actually take a break. I'm like, don't force yourself because then it's going to sound forced. It's not forced. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'll take a break. And that that's when I like I go for a bike ride or, you know, I go to the gym or I do something else. But just by doing some physical activity and you get the endorphins rushing through your brain. And, and I'm always I, I'm never disappointed. I always think of something by the end of that. That's interesting. I, I think, and I think that's right. If you force it, I, I say it comes out flat. I don't know how else to describe it, but just you can right. tell when you go back and read it, it's, it's flat. It doesn't have that. It's not shiny. It doesn't have that, that extra thing. And we yeah. have our, our process. Is, yeah. Yeah. And our process, it's interesting because for me, I actually, I write on a word count because I, I have to force myself to do it, but I do the same thing you do, which is I will, I will, if I'm not even if I'm just stuck, I, just to get back into it, I go and I'm, and I'm constantly re-editing you know, several pages back and coming back into the story. And I'm constantly doing that. So it flows. Um, Cause the advice I got 
you know, initially it's just get it all on paper, write it down. Don't, don't worry about it. And they did that. And you've got 300 pages of crap that is now, you know, heavy, right. And it takes forever to go back through. So constantly combing through, I think is really, really good advice. And it's interesting that we both, we both work that same way. So that's cool. Well, I, I agree with that concept of get it on paper, where you have to go back and edit. You have to. Yeah. yeah, or else you won't finish. You, it'll be too much. You'll get it all done. And you go back and you start. And it's like, oh my god, you know, there's so much changed, and it's just not the same. And I was a much better writer at the end than I was at the beginning. You know, all that stuff. So uh, that's well, cool. one thing I've realized over time is like, especially in the beginning, like I was almost OCD about it. Like I was like, I got to describe stuff because I really hate it when you like read a book and they'll talk about all these like strange concepts, like you know maybe you're on an alien planet or ship, but they don't describe anything, so you can't picture it. So you're like, they're talking about nonsense. It, it doesn't really grab me, you know? So then I was kind of over describing when I first started and I had to scale that back. And as I've gone along, I've, I've scaled it back even more because I think it makes a smoother flow. Yeah. Yeah. It, look, it, it's tough, right? It, it's a tough balance. I, I, I'm still working on that. You know, I, 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 I kind of did the same as you. Know, I mean, I, I tried to explain a lot and then it just, and then the story takes forever to get going. So people don't get into it. On the other hand, if you don't explain anything, they get mad, right? Because it's like right. you said, they, you got to give them enough clues so they can get their imagination going, but you don't have to fill in all the blanks for them, depending on the story, of course. So well, that, that's sure. interesting. All right, Dan, look, it's been great talking to you. I'll put a link to uh, your website and uh, the end of the world book website uh, below this. Um, okay. And uh, maybe, you know, when you get your next book out, let me know and we'll do another video and we'll talk about it. Okay. Awesome. All right, Dan. Thanks, sir. I'll talk to you. Great, thank you. Bye. Thank you for watching. Please consider hitting the subscribe button.